gonna get a car copyright strike if I do that. <laughs> I wonder if I'll get a copyright strike for that. I'll be quite interested. Oh, I forgot to turn on the camera. Like a plonker. Oh, it's I think the opus in sync. You're gonna see, you might be offended by what you'll see on the side here. Uh, I do need to keep an eye on, the, uh, well, comments and things. So you will see there is a computer in shot. That is true. I can't dispute that. It's, it's there. What are you gonna say? What are you gonna do about it? Oh, lovely. So well, first off, first off, before we start this, before we start this, uh, let's have a look. Sam is about to talk, I think. You can tell the future. You can read the future. Uh, DMCA'd. Don't know what that means. I know there is a slight delay to this, so I don't know how behind I am. I'm going to check. Ain't got a fudging clue. So, um... No chance of copyright. Oh yeah, well, I don't know. So I'm gonna do all of these. Uh, this is pretend. This is. A, I'm trying to sell you a car right now. Yo. So anyway, uh, today what are we doing? I'm just gonna put this tripod down. It's annoying me. I'm gonna walk straight into it. I will get to this. I promise you. Oh, and what behind me? Oh, there is a computer behind me. <gasps> oh, I'll just glare it out with this. Oh, I didn't really do much. But, um, it's all gone delay again. Ah, the lag, it suddenly gets all laggy. Like, like this is a cool thing, but I think it's just because this computer is absolutely rubbish. So I'll turn on buffering, turn on buffering. Ah, ah it's like, hello, check. Hello. It's like it jumps around, well, what are you gonna do? Uh, I don't know what happened, but the video is behind the audio a bit. Yeah, it kind of jumps around. It's very strange. Uh, I'm very sorry about that. I'll need to look into that. I think it might just be... It's so, it was fine until literally just this second. It's not punk. The part, the lead, I'm not punk. This is just... An, an, this is... I, I barely buy clothes. So it's like I just shove whatever I have. These are the worst shoes to wear in the summer. Um... Okay, right, hello. Okay, I think we're in time now. So if I click off, yeah, ah, there we go. Okay, so, ah, uh, demonic punk, so, check, check. Okay, I'm gonna stop looking about that. So if I am behind in time, I'm very sorry. So a little bit of an introduction on what's happening today. Today, uh, basically, um, I get a lot of, I get messages, uh, and the most common message uh, or email or anything like that is where to start. And I've sort of developed a copy, copy and paste kind of reply, just sending a couple of links and stuff about well the thing that we're talking building today, which I'm sure you've all well no you probably all have them, but a lot of you, or some of you have probably built one. Uh, a few of you have heard of one, and if not, then hopefully, I'm hoping this might be ins an insight into some, in, for some people, because I, it is well documented. Uh, we'll go through a few links and stuff in this video, because I figured I should do this as a live stream, and leave it live, and leave it public and stuff, because it's better to do it in real time, like, mess around with it all, uh, just because obviously there are mountains of videos on how to build an Atari Punk console. For instance, in the description in this video, you will see the best link to the classic uh, Collins Lab on the Make YouTube channel of making an Atari Punk console. He did very good YouTube videos. And then also, I'm not, I'm not, oh sorry, I'm getting lost. Um, and then and then also there's a really good instructable in the description. Uh, so these two are very good and there's just a mountain. If you type in Atari Punk Console, you just get, you get hit with a load of information and stuff. And this is like, it's sort of like a step up from potential. It's a good first project purely because it's so simple. In fact, it literally requires two capacitors, one resistor, two knobs and a chip. And the chip is right here, so I'm going to flick over because of the magic of modern technology. Oh, oh, is it doing it? Some engineers did some analysis on your circuits. Ah, wow, engineers can be engineers. I'll have a look. Send me a link, please. 
They're probably like, this is awful, this is the worst, because, you know, it's all got to be very serious and everything needs to be perfect. In the end of the day, with electronic and synth circuits, you're not flying someone to the moon, you're not saving someone's life, so who, you're going to build it whatever works best. Like, you know, like, the cleanest oscillator in the world is not important. If you want the cleanest oscillator in the world, go install Windows 95 and load up Reason or some crap. You, it needs an element of crap, because remember, bad is good. It really is. You need an element of bad to be like that, that kind of characterful, like, charm to things. And it's just adding an element of oof. And it, the thing is, the analog synths and stuff, they're better because they're worse. And sometimes that is down to some rather, you know, you know, there's a lot of charm in machines that are usually being built with uh, sometimes bad design choices and also cost-cutting cost -cutting measures and stuff within the design that maybe makes things, uh, you know, like uh, in unsymmetrical oscillations and stuff and, and noise on the power supply or something like that that actually adds to the synthesizer sound. So I'm never usually... Uh, bothered by looking at the analysis unless it's something that's genuinely dis dis really wrong which is thanks to a couple of awesome people on the Look Mum No Computer Forum like Frederick and Antoine and people like that over on there there's uh, been a couple of times where it's been like to save my, save my neck on a few designs but yeah in the end of the day there's no right and there's no wrong in electronic circuits unless it goes Pfft! and if it does that's a learning experience but yeah, send us the link, whoever said that, that some engineers uh, were analysing it. It's great. Oh, thank you. It's cool. Um, you are the best. Daniel Decker says he's the best synth designer because his are really bad. It's true. What ETIT, which circuit are you talking about that doesn't always work? I'm a little confused by that because I don't know. Please tell me. Um, anyway, we'll get on to this. So what we're going to build is the uh, bread, well, it's simple Atari Punk console. It's a nice, simple thing. We're going to start by breadboarding it first, then we're going to actually build it onto a strip board. I'll try and touch on a different thing. So this first off, if you don't know, I'm not going to make any assumptions right now because uh, they, I'm just trying to answer these emails that, uh, that come in and stuff. Um, so this is a breadboard. Uh, breadboards are called breadboards because they were literally breadboards. People used to steal their mum's breadboard from the kitchen or, you know, the breadboard. And um, it could be their dad's breadboard. I don't know. Anybody's breadboard. They would just got that breadboard and just started drill screwing bits into it and making prototypes for circuits and electronics onto literal planks of wood. And you can still do that, that's a viable choice. And then in about the six, late 60s, uh, 70s, these things were got really quite prominent. And uh, you know, this is quite a popular thing. And now today you can pick these up for like, uh, these specific ones you can pick, I think like five of them for 10 pounds, that kind of thing. Is this live going to be saved? Yes, this live is going to be saved. This is another thing that I need to touch on before we start about this, is I do like I do build as live streams much like this. I do them nearly every week over on my Patreon. This one's a public one because I figured it was quite a simple beginner one. It would be good to actually, you know, show people. But if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want to see more of these, you can watch all of them back as well as watch future ones and join the conversation over on my Patreon pretty much every week. Sometimes more, sometimes a tiny bit less, but it, pretty much every week. Anyway, we'll get back to this. Because this is like, I'm trying to keep up. I'm the slowest at reading, so. You build a Lego base sim. Has nine voice Atari Punk console. The free base voice was the hardest. I made a breadboard sim from wood in the early 80s. That's cool, that's very cool. I'm gonna have, I've got, I've got to learn how to um, read. That's a definite thing on my to-do list. I've just, I've realized, I've just given my, myself a splinter in my teeth because these, uh, this wire is really hard to actually separate from this, uh, from this nine volt battery. So the first thing I'm actually going to do, uh, I wasn't actually planning on doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And that is find some clips because I've just realized I've got a bit of a problem. Uh, oh, oh. So the first thing, so the first thing that we need to do is you see this thing right here. This is a nine volt battery clip. And sometimes, quite a lot of the times, the actual bits of, um, the bits of wire inside them are very thin. They're, they're like braided wire. And braided, like multi-stranded wire 
as well as like just really thin wire is it's really hard to use with breadboards purely because when you get these you get it let's zoom this in you grab hold of it and you try and poke it in the hole yes <laughs> you try and poke it in the hole and you can't poke it in the bleeding hole because it's just not quite right this is um, a really cool thing it's a helping hand uh, but it's a, like a plasticky thing, but it's way better than the magnifying glass helping hand. So we're just I'm going to put this, and I'm basically just going to solder it, solder onto get some solder on. Uh, by the way, soldering irons. Here's another thing we're going to touch on: soldering irons. This one right here, uh, I go through soldering irons quite a lot. That's purely because I I can go for a month of using them for four or five days, four or five hours a day, maybe even more. So this month hasn't been as much, but they don't, you know, like you you replace the tips, and then sometimes you have to replace the whole thing. Uh, after a lot of trying a lot of different types of soldering irons out, having good times with them, having bad times with them. I found that so far this, uh, I've quite liked these for about a year and a half now and they're called TS100. Uh, the TS100 soldering iron seems to be pretty good. The tips last quite a long time. They last about two months of constant use, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but I, like I said, I used it, I use it quite a lot. Um, but uh, you know, they last a lot longer than, for instance, if you, you can get away with just spending five pounds on a soldering iron. If you only plan on doing a few projects, then just do that. Just get a five pound soldering iron. Even if you just want to start to see how it goes, get one of those. But the problem is, is five pound soldering irons, uh, they don't really have a temperature control. So the, the tips don't last as long. And uh, I mean, I've had like, because after about, I reckon about six hours of soldering, you would have lost, lost the solder tip on a cheap one, but you, you know, it's still, it's what you need to do. So any old soldering iron will do. Uh, so I'm literally just soldering, I'm gonna zoom in. I've just put some, I've just wetted the solder in this side, wetted the solder on that side. Gonna stick them together like, um, it's like, it's like you're melting, and melting the two blobs of solder that's on the two bits together and bish, bosh, bash. You've got yourself a connector that will connect to nine volts. Ooh, this nine volt bit, I didn't even buy it. I like everything today. I, f I found this, I can't remember where, it was on a broken toy, I think, and I just removed this. So, didn't even need to buy it. So, I love that notebook. What notebook? Oh, my arm, or the notebook? I'm trying to see a notebook. I'm just gonna check, double check the, if the end phrase, when you pock in the hole, then you're doing it wrong, huh? Need some soldering fat and tin. Oh, ETIT, -E just to get back to your reverse avalanche oscillator. Yes, this is true, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. There's a lot of there's a lot of character uh, factors involved in the reverse trans uh, oscillator. The ones that always work are the ones using the part two. I can't remember. They're like BCC. What are they? SS9018 transistors. They work 100% of the time. They don't work if you plug. You sometimes you need to buffer their output, but they work every time. Like I've and I, trust me, I know. I've ordered. I ordered. I have. I've ordered from different manufacturers in the thousand oscillator mega drone and SS9018s work every time. Two N3904 transistors, however they seem to vary uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer. So that's just a pointer on if you're planning on building the super simple oscillator, but maybe this might solve your thing. But first, we're gonna find a nine volt battery. I don't usually have many batteries about. Gotta find a battery. Let's see if we can find a battery. Uh, oh, oh, find a battery. The best way of finding out if your nine volt battery has some charge, you just lick it. Ah, that's definitely got some charge. Uh, I wouldn't suggest to do that if you've got a weak heart, but the thing is, is it's only getting your tongue, like you, the ground is going through a ground lid, so you're only really, uh, uh, it tastes funky. So yeah, that's a good way of checking your nine volt batteries. I've had some people saying that's a bad way of doing it. That's what I say to that. <laughs> At, 
the one who like dislikes is a twaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Uh, two potentiometers, uh, 500k. I'm using a larger potentiometer because it doesn't really matter. Who really cares? It, we're not saving anybody's life. Uh, we might be. Uh, 1k resistor. You can literally use any 1k resistor. Anything that says 1k on eBay, just get a 1k resistor. 0.01 UF microfarads. So that is, uh, just got to remember, that's 10 nanofarads. So this is, uh, imagine this is like uh, centimeters and millimeters. So microfarads and nanofarads, so you could either write in 0.01 microfarads, you buy two of these, and they could be, yet yeah, again, any old capacitor, maybe a ceramic capacitor, it doesn't matter, this will work with any of them really, but ceramic will be cheapest, or you could get, it will be called a 10 NF, so type in 10 NF, and it will be the same thing, it just will be described differently on the title, so don't get confused, if it says 0.01 UF, or, Z or 10 NF, they're exactly the same darn thing, so don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And also, if you get confused with the conversions of capacitors, type in on Google, capacitor conversion chart. And then there's loads of charts on the internet that will help you uh, kind of decipher because they have different listings on electronic shops and websites, uh, describe them in different ways. Like this is 0.01 UF, but I've got a bunch that say 10 NF, which is the same thing. Anyway, we're getting back to this. Getting back to business. Right, let's build it. So we've already got this right here. This is the um, uh, the 556, which is the dual timer that we're talking about. What's a wanker resistor? <laughs> I don't know. I miss 90s radio shack. Yeah, that's the great thing. Like, we had Maplins here, Maplin, and all our stuff. In fact, I think there's a Maplin uh, magazine here. Oh, living. No, it isn't. Damn it. Yeah, I miss, like, it's a sad time when all of it, even up to, you know, like, you could go and, like, I, like if I made this three years ago, I'd say, pop down to your local Radio Shack or Maplin or whatever and go and buy these. And you could literally buy all of this for under, I mean, Maplin, it'll probably cost quite a bit because they're not cheap. Radio Shack wasn't either. They were quite expensive, I seem to remember. But you could get that for about five pounds, maybe. So we're gonna do the breadboard slightly different to when we build the strip board. Uh, I need to speed up or I'm gonna be, because I do remember saying in the title I was gonna do this in a rush. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what am I doing? So, um, right, okay, we're gonna do this. Let's get on this, let's get on. Oh, 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 gotta get rushing, gotta get them, get them body moving. Oh, okay, okay. So remember, on the 556 timer chip, which you've got right here, I'm gonna get the light on there. You'll notice there are, if you look really closely, there's a little bit of a semicircle here, but there is a circle there. Oh, how confusing. Well, this is its bum, and this is its head. So this is the top of it, and this is the bottom. It's a bit confusing because this one actually has a circle on top, and this one has a semicircle and a circle on the bottom. But if there is a semicircle and a circle on the bottom, that means the circle's its bottom, and the, the semicircle pushing out is the top. Whatever's biggest is the top bit, okay? So that's a good way of figuring it out. So like, you've got, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's the first thing. I'm literally, like, this is literally gonna be, like, I'm gonna try and think of everything that isn't obvious. Uh, to just suggest because it might not have been touched over. This is why I haven't done an edited video So people who really want to do this who haven't really got an experience with anything if I miss anything hit some uh, hit some uh, comment comment some suggestions and um, Amazon I try not to suggest the a word, but you know, we're all we're all contributors. So okay, it was right. So uh, this is V plus V plus right here also, look in the instructables on this work. They, they do a really good description of the instructables, and that's why I've chosen this circuit to actually build, uh, is because the actual instructables that goes with this, which is the link in the description, is really quite good and helpful. So we've got this red line right here. This red line uh, con uh, connects up to the nine volt. In fact, right now, just because I'm feeling a bit dangerous, I'm gonna take the nine volt battery out, uh, just because you know. Uh, so the red line is co coordinating to the plus on the battery and the black line is the minus. I'm gonna get some wires and we're like so, pin 14, which is this pin right here. Uh, if you follow these lines along, you need to connect it up to pin 14 as well as pin 10. You see that? It connects up to pin 14 and pin 10. So I'm gonna actually just 
This isn't going to be clean. I'm, I'm a very messy breadboarder, and I feel like it's good that I make it messy today, so people don't feel bad that theirs is messy as well. Nine, eight, nine, ten. Here we go. So that's the two. And then there's another good thing, actually. I may as well do this. Um, here's another thing. You usually stop doing this on uh, on relatively simple circuits because you can't. You start knowing how they go. But it's always a good thing if you're starting out to not get confused. Is to draw off what you've already draw what you've already done. So I've done that. I've done that. There we go. Um, we've got that. So that's that V plus. Where else does V plus, which is the voltage, by the way the voltage can be anything between 5 and 9 volts usually, uh, it goes over to pin 4 as well, so we find that where pin 4 is. In fact I'm going to do something before we even get it go any further, I'm actually going to send this red wire, this red line which is on here, over to the other side of the breadboard so that the plus is connected. And I'm going to get another wire and I'm going to connect the black side, which is the negative. So we've got plus and minus on both sides of the breadboard. So we've got nice, easy bit. We get a bit more cable. By the way, uh, likewise on eBay and whatnot, or the A word and stuff, you can get uh, breadboard kits that come with little wires. You can get these little wires in little boxes, and they're they're always useful to have around if you're doing breadboard. Or you can make your own sizes, but actually it's quite handy to have pre-cut ones, but speeds it up a little bit and you can get them all put back in. They last quite a while and you can also get extended versions. These ones are good, they're like quite long, but the problem with these is uh, if you're making something like this, with cables this long it just gets really messy really, really quickly. So I don't know, you don't, you don't want to you don't want to worry about that stuff now, do you? So, you know, get some of these. If you're really feeling fancy and going like, oh, this is a hobby I could get into. Oh, oh. Well, maybe just get a bunch of different types. But I'd recommend definitely just buying a starter, seeing if you like it first. Or even just buying a circuit board if you want to jump straight into the soldering. Soldering. Just out of some more water while I'm talking all this time. Ah, oh, I miss wor workshop whiskey. I really miss workshop whiskey. It's fine. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm gonna put the. Okay, I'm gonna jump. I jumped before even describing what we're doing. So I, I need to cross this off. I've done this. Okay. So now we're gonna put in this, which is goes to these little arrows down here. Like I said, I'm leaving no stone unturned. These little arrows right here correspond to ground, and that's the minus on the nine volt battery. So the minus on the nine volt battery are these little uh, triangle folk, and that says ground because it looks like you're literally like. In the uh, in the olden days or whatever, you would get a nail and plug it into the ground. So like, imagine you're just like literally plugging it into the ground. You're in the ground. So no, you're not in the ground. I hope not for a long time. So there we go. We plugged that one in. So that one's gone straight to ground. So we have the power. It is all connected up. Technically, if we plug this in, five 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 six will just go up, turn up, and go. Ooh, I'm alive! I'm alive! <coughs> All my guitars are, ca are connected with Cat5. That sounds 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 sweaty. It sounds like IT crowd kind of thing. It's quite funny. So the next thing we're going to do is this this next squiggly line. We've got another squiggly line. What the fudge is that squiggly line over there? This is a resistor. This is the resistor I talked about. Literally, you could use any old resistor. This is quite a common resistor. We've got a metal. It's out of focus. Get in fudge in focus. This is a metal film resistor. Metal film. And it is a quarter watt. So I think this would be titled as what, like, metal film 1K uh, quarter watt. It's because a quarter watt because... If it goes anything over a quarter of a watt, this thing will start getting warm and start smelling funky and that magic smoke will come out. It's not the end of the world. In fact, they work quite a lot after that. And they do actually keep their resistance reasonably if you're not trying to do anything really, really solidly. They do actually keep their resistance a little bit after they've burned. Unless they've burned into two, then you've completely got no hope. So maybe when you, if you've seen something burn, but for some reason, like, uh, what am I saying? Um, where's the wire? Where's the... Sorry, one sec, one sec, one sec, Rue. 
for instance, uh, in here, this is a this is a Eurorack breadboard module. You pop the uh, you pop it on here, and it actually directly wires up to a Eurorack power supply. Hence, why there's a blue and a red on this breadboard. That's because the blue is minus 12 volts. And uh, well, I won't I won't talk about this stuff because if you're not aware of it, it might confuse quite considerably. But if you look really carefully on this, you'll actually see that the resistors are completely they're brown. In fact, this one has burned to the point where I was like, fudge it, I'm just going to put a wire completely across this. That just shows that even though there was a, there was a mistake at one point on a breadboard I made, this uh, bre this 10 ohm resistor right here went up in smoke and, you know, it still works. It's probably just acting like a straight through wire though, but I don't know. It's, so just, just for an in instance, if you're interested. There's another point, DNA Electronics. That's a, this is another thing DNA Electronics just mentioned. If you are struggling with uh, Bernie resistors, basically what you do is if you uh, wire two, let's say we've got one 1K, we wire another 1K and we wire them together like this, what you end up actually doing is you actually you half the resistance, so you end up getting 500 ohms. So instead of one kilo ohms, you get 500 ohms, but also you double the wattage. What? 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 So you can actually pass through like half a watt now. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Right, I, I might even only get up to the end of the breadboard on this video. I'll be talking like a like a absolute plonker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna what what. I'm going to wire in the 1K resistor. If you follow it along, so we go from pin 1, we go down, we go over to pin 6. So we're, I'm going to snip this to size. Also, a good little suggestion, get some of these. They're pretty good. Uh, they're called Clippity McClippities. You can get them from the Clippity Clippity shop. Uh, I really don't know what they're actually called. I guess uh, Clippy Clippy Clippies. Clipper Clippers. Circuit Clippers, I'm not sure. But I'll cut it to a reasonable size. And now I'm just going to... Oh yeah, oh just look at that, how fantastic. Now I'm gonna find some 10 nano, nano, far nano, nano, nano farads. Sam, you've got negative on pin four. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Eagle Ears. Uh, this is the great thing about doing this, is that I would have sat there going for hours in a sec, being like, how oh, did I break it? Why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? It's just because I did that. So yeah. Okay, right, 10 nanofarads. I'll get out of my 10 nanofarad box. What we got in here are a couple of different uh, capacitors. To be honest, you could use any old ones of these. Uh, most of these are ceramic. Uh, ceramic come in two different, actually, types of boxes. There's this one that looks like these are the cheapest ones, and then these are pretty cheap as well. But they're basically exactly the same fudging thing. Uh, these big dropules, I can't remember whether those are actually ceramic as well. I don't know, actually. But they're chunky, use whatever, it really doesn't matter, just just use it. There's only a, in synthesizers, there's only a handful of different scenarios where you do need better, better capacitors than ceramic capacitors, but these scenarios are very well documented, and if you're building something, in the description it'll you say at least once, or use a fudging polystyrene capacitor, use it! Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to snip the legs of this off again. What I need to do is wire this up to pin 6. Uh, 10 nanofarads. Boom. Right in there, just like that. What? 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 Just has a box of 10 nanofarads. Is that not, is that not a thing? Yeah, I know, but this is the thing. I've been doing this for plonkers long, plonkers years. I've kind of built up a fair chunk of, of plonker material sitting in the electronics cabinet. I'm, I've got to stop putting things in without saying what I'm doing. I'm doing this purely to show people if they could do it themselves if they really want to. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start connecting things at random that look like they're supposed to be connected together. So 12 and 13. Pin 12 and pin 13 connect together. I'm not going to describe what is going on in this circuit today as I don't want to confuse anything. This is literally just getting the beginner's beginning sort of if they want to. There's no pressure, no pressure. Okay, so I've done that one. As you can see on this side, pin two goes to pin six. So we connect pin two to pin six. Lovely jubbly. Oh, ah, uh, counter not. I said, oh, ah, uh, counter not. Right, we've done those. I forgot to cross that one off. Oh my God, YouTube ruins everything. Thanks, chat. What happened? I don't know. 
Green one, Mylar. It's a Mylar film. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. See, that's the other great thing about these comment sections. There's always somebody that bleeding knows. There's always somebody that knows it straight off the bat. And it always makes me wonder because, oh, I've just messed up the... Sorry. <coughs> right, anyway. Okay, we're getting back to this. Uh, where's the other capacitor? So we've got the capacitor. Uh, uh, this other capacitor goes from pin 12 off to ground. Remember ground, so we're wiring that end, pin 12, which if you look at it, it actually connects to pin 13 as well. So whatever, I'm actually, because I've wired this, I've done this in such a way that um, it's gonna be quite hard to actually plug it into pin 12, but this also connects to pin 13. So I'm actually gonna put it going from pin 13 over to ground. So we're gonna get this, gonna snippy snippy. You don't need to snip the legs, by the way. I'm just making it a little bit neater. The thing is, the shorter the legs, the less likely you're gonna knock it out of its out of its little slot. So you know, you know, just thinking forwards, just thinking forwards now. Right, days, okie dokie. Right, that's that done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually ignore all of this stuff. Who gives a fudge in flying fudge about this stuff in the box? The reason it's in the box is because it doesn't bleed in matter. Who gives a fudge? Who gives a fudge? Fudge? I don't give a fudge. I don't give a fudge at all. Like, it does say to plug, to use these resistors and stuff to, uh, you're literally plugging it into a hi-fi system. What this does over here is it actually converts, it sort of makes it so you make sure it's gonna stay around zero, but we don't care. We're just gonna plug it in. Um, so, the next thing we do before we actually do all of, well, we don't do that, is we get these two things. And what does these two things, what are they? Well, let's first look at the actual symbol and figure out what the symbol is. Well, best practice engineers are not always speaking with that old grumpy voice, you know. I know, I know, I know, I'm joking. I, 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 I was only, somebody took it to heart, I'm very sorry. Okay, anyway. Okay, anyway, all right, we're getting back to this. So the reason why it looks reasonably like the resistor is because we've got to look down to the, to the base. Right, so, so this is a variable resistor. So you'll see it's a resistor with a fudging arrow in the middle. Who would have thought of it? Like imagine the person just being like, how are we gonna make this look like a variable resistor? Let's put a fudging arrow, arrow in the middle. Uh, how this works actually, and I'm telling you what we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna get a potentiometer. <coughs> this is for the people, this is for the people who need to want to know. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what's going on inside a potentiometer. So this is a potentiometer right here. Um, oh, oh, that. So what I'm gonna do is, so a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor, variable resistor, potentiometer, same thing, different words. You twist it and it changes the resistance. Uh, it works slightly different. So there's a resistor between these two points uh, and in this one it's like 100k and then the one in the middle you can choose between any part of the resistor from that side over to that side so you're kind of selecting it the middle leg is called the wiper and the outside legs are called the and then yeah uh, so we'll have a quick look on the inside let's have a little look see see what's in there see what we got going on in here Doop it, doop it, remove one, two, three. I'm gonna remove the top for everybody. The, the top of the potentiometer. Actually, I'm gonna remove the bottom. It actually works like that, I forgot. So let's take the case off. So as you can see right now, there is a rotating finger majiggy in it. This finger majiggy is, uh, so we remove the plastic shaft. This is the plastic shaft, and the, on the plastic shaft is a metal finger majiggy. Uh, I'm gonna remove this quiet. Uh, if you notice, um, this metal finger majiggy actually is like a, a sprung loaded mechanism. Uh, there's the back part which connects to the internal uh, part of this. So uh, there's this internal connect uh, set setup that connects wires straight into this. This has next to no resistance whatsoever. So uh, that means that when you put it on here, this little bit is connecting, always connecting to this central ring. And then there's this other bit called the wiper, this bit selects around this black thing and this is a resistor. So it's selecting how, where in the resistor it's listening to. 
that's doing that. And this is uh, probably why you get this is why you get dirty pots. And you know when you twist a knob and it goes. Well, that's because there's muck in between this and this. So you just got to think about it. Just think about it for a strip for a second. But yeah, I just read. I think about it for a strip, and I just read proto waves. Oh, it's just a strip, I guess. Metal on graphite. That's the one. Fresh part. Fresh part. <laughs> <clears throat> Sam, didn't you say that you would build a sequencer with a bunch of Strouger switches? <gasps> Strougers are coming back, and they're coming back strong. In maybe even the next video, we are going to see Strouger switches coming back strong. But right now, we're going to be talking about this. Okay, so now you've seen what a potentiometer does. Um, that's what a potentiometer works like, and that hopefully describes the actual image. The image actually shows how it's doing its thing. There's a wire coming in the top and this is an arrow that looks like it can move from anywhere along this, which is the resistor. It does make it a little bit complicated because this um, this side of the resistor isn't actually connected to anything. Um, that's because you can wire a potentiometer in multiple different ways. Uh, let's say you wired this, I won't even talk about that now. So right now in this setup, uh, we're not, we're using it literally as an adjustable resistor. That means we can ignore this side and this side is one side of the resistor and this is the other side and you can choose how much resistant, how big this resistor is for how far away this one is listening from this one. Uh, so you can go from anywhere between 0 and 100k. Uh, the the numbers on this, uh, the letters on this, there's an A letter usually or there is a B letter on these things. Um, this means the actual taper and taper means how it adjusts, how, how what the response is of the knob. For instance the A means a logarithmic curve so it's a logarithmic movement within the resistance and this is a linear one. So linear is like, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 22, 23. It kind of moves in a linear fashion. This one has a curve to its uh, response. <clears throat> anyway. So with that in mind, we're going to put in these potentiometers. Potentiometers come in plethora of different packages. This is one package. This is a big chunky package. Um, this is a circuit board uh, package. This is one that you mount on a circuit board. Um, this is one that is quite useful as well. This is like a breadboard one. Uh, you actually adjust with your screwdriver. If you look at the bottom, you'll see there are actually three legs on it. Uh, this one's been well used, but there's the two outside legs and the one inside leg. Sometimes it's a little bit confusing to get this one the right way around, this specific package. But you can just get them in all different shapes and sizes. There's just a mountain of different resistors out there. Have a look, see. Have a look. Anyway, we're going to use these for this breadboard one. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to put this one in first, uh, which is a B500K. I haven't got a 500K, so I'm using one that's twice as big. Uh, this is going to complicate it a little bit more because these preset potentiometers, actually, um, the descriptions, the way to figure out which ones they are is a little bit complicated. So this says 104. Uh, the easiest way of describing this is uh, look at the chart. 104 actually means um, 1 mega ohm. If it's 103, it actually means 100k. Uh, if it's 102, it means 10k. If it's 101, it means 1k. Uh, 1 mega ohm is basically 10, uh, 1000k. So 101 is 1k, 102 is 10k, 103 is 100k, 104 is 1000k. Let's say it's 501, that's 50k. No. 5k I mean sorry 502 is 50k if you get confused search up potentiometer and just type in whatever numbers on them and Google will just spur out whatever the fudging thing is anyway so if you don't know that and if you're not getting your head around it quickly just just search up the number and type in potentiometer you'll find out what it is straight away so pin one uh, we're gonna wire it up to these two legs on it which are the uh, the um, wires that are required so um, we get the uh, a little leg. I'm actually going to remove this to plug it in. So remember, the blue on this side is connected to the red on this side. So that actually means it's plus voltage again. So I'm going to plug that in there, and I'm putting that. I'm putting that where so it connects up to the middle leg. And then <coughs> we find another wire, and we put pin one to. Uh, it's a bit of a wiggle. 
pin one to the outside leg of the potentiometer. If you could see, if I take it off, you can see there two wires are connecting up to these two. This one's completely ignored in this specific scenario. And then we do the same with this side. Um, let's find a little wire. I'm getting tired, I'm gonna, all right, okay, so I'm gonna pop a little wire here. That's going in the middle. And then that, oh, I've forgotten. Where's my manners? Uh, so this connects up to pin 13. So we we'll wire this up. I'm going to put this there so before I put the potentiometer down. Ah, oh, look at that. I've got to straighten these up. The legs are all bent. One sec. <sighs> right, so I'm just going to straighten the legs up because they're all a bit wonky donkey. Using some pliers, getting it nice and straight. There we go. Pop them down. Boom! Beautiful. Absolutely fan fudge fantastic. Right. So now uh, we look at this. Uh, I stupidly crossed out all of this stuff. I wasn't. I was getting a bit carried away with myself. So pin nine is actually the output. As you can see, it actually wires over. Stupidly, I'd draw all of us. It wires over to this circuit right here, which actually correlates to the output. But we're not fudging. <laughs> Who cares? So we're going to wire, uh, or you can actually wire it into a speaker, but it doesn't actually get loud enough. I haven't actually got a, a, a small enough a speaker that seems to suit this circuit right sitting about. So we're just going to literally wire this into our hi fi speaker. Oh no, I just unplugged it. So right next to me, I have. A, a phono cable with a phono cable uh, attachment uh, that is connected to a hi-fi speaker, just a crappy hi-fi speaker. My best suggestion to you is if you have, if you're getting into this hobby and you're going to be building circuits and stuff, always buy a really crappy hi-fi system and just use it like you will not blow it up trust me you will be hard pressed to blow it up you can plug anything into it you're not going to blow it up and that's another thing pin five and eight sam what have i done with pin five and eight? Oh yeah thank you very much i completely forgot to plug in the output of the first oscillator into the input i just looked at that so yeah if you can see i was getting a bit excitable and i forgot about this wire right here that plugs pin eight to pin five. We would have been sat there for a while. Actually, it would have still worked, I think. I think it would have still worked. It's just it wouldn't, uh, it would only be one oscillator. You'll hear what it sounds like in a bit. So pin five. Oh, over to pin eight. The problem with putting it over the potentiometer, over this chip, is let's say you accidentally fry this chip, then you've got to remove whatever's on top of it. So if you're going to do this and you might break it, then maybe make a longer cable that goes around or connect it there and then connect it there and then connect it there, but you know, or if you're just lazy like me, just, just do it like that, just do it like that. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug it in. Uh, right now, I've got these, what you could do, uh, there's, here's another idea. Uh, actually, I might do this. Shall I do it? Shall I just snip it? What you could do is you could snip this, cut it with a bit of scissors, and inside of here there'll be a red and a black wire. I'm pretty sure there will be. And uh, what you could do with these red and black wires, the black wire you connect directly to ground. That means you grounded the hi-fi system to this, and then you use the red wire to plug into anything. Like I said, you're going to be pretty damn unlucky to fry, any, fry a hi-fi speak hi-fi system. I have been do I've plugged countless amounts of crap into a hi-fi system and not really giving it much regard and I've still yet to break something. I haven't broken a mixer, I plug this crap straight into an interface. These things are way more hardy than people let, in, let on. So don't let, don't let, you know, if, you've, if you're hard pressed and you just, you know, just plug it straight in. Who cares? Who fudging cares? Right, so uh, I'm just plugging it into this breadboard instead. You could use a potential, a jack socket instead, uh, which is what I'm going to do. But like I said, if you really want to cut the end of the end of a phono cable off and literally just plug it in, plug it in with your fingers. So I'm just going to do this. Actually, <coughs> it takes all the time in the world. I am taking all the time in the world. I I realised that when I was going to build it in a rush, I realised I wasn't going to be able to describe it enough that I think it might answer some questions. I may be missing some stuff, so if somebody doesn't 
No, the reason why I haven't actually snipped this, I've fought ahead actually, because I'm going to be building this in a second into an enclosure with a jack socket out. So, oh, am I just going to snip it? Oh, oh I'm just going to, I'm going to snip it. I'm going to snip it. It's going. We're going. Ah, oh, but it'll be braided in there. But I need to show people. Ah, oh, it's going. Are you ready? It's done it. I did it. I did it. Right, okay, so I'm just literally taking the end outside of this off. I'll show you what's on the inside. This is this this is the easiest way. If you haven't got the right cables, uh typical. So it's a different this is a this is a different kind of uh, cable to the usual phonos that sometimes some it depends what age these things are. Modern ones usually come uh, not shielded like this. They usually kind of being cheapskates. So um <clears throat> Right now, get in focus, get in focus. Right now we have, ah, get in focus. We've, I've just wired, so this outside stuff is the ground. This inside yellow one, I think it's because I've used a yellow one, which is a, usually a signal cable. This is usually a composite signal cable, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just snip to the end of this. Ah, uh, oh, you bloody idiot. Ah, uh, teeth time. Whee! So we've got this again. We got ground. We got. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the power socket. I'm literally going <clears> to <throat> going to get hold of this. Get get my helping hand again. You don't need this. You can use your finger. It's just like you just. It's just quicker. Ah, right, get on there. Right. Let's get this going. Get in focus. Get in focus. Do be do be do do be. Get in focus today, please. Get in focus, 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 yeah! Da right, I'm just waiting for my, potato, my uh, soldering iron. Yep, also, if you do decide to do it with a 555 circuit, just remember that you'll need to plug in power to both of them. For instance, the 556 uh, is basically two 555 timer chips, but they share the plus and the minus volts, which is pin 14 and pin 7. However, you can find a mountain of different schematics of the Atari Punk console with 555 timers. For instance, this one right here is slightly different, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, you got, but you, yeah, yeah. Right, so, ah, like, why does it always zoom in? I don't want you to zoom. I want you to get in focus, though. Right, so, solder. Sam, get back to work. I said I was doing this in a rush. This is not a rush. Right, so I've wetted this. I'm gonna get the um get this stuff again. Gonna pull some out. <coughs> Put this here. Wet this stuff. Get this again. So, like I said, you don't need to snip the end of the phono cable off, but because of popular popular on the uh, comments, I I felt I needed to just to show because it makes it a little bit simpler to grasp. But the, the other thing is, remember, uh, where's the end? Where's the decapitated jack? Um, the other thing is with jack cables, uh, there's loads of different types of jack cables yet again. And there's always the confusion of what is what. So if you look at this, uh, this is a mono jack cable. It's got this big bit of metal. This is the sleeve and this is connected to ground. And this is the tip. And you see there's a little black bit, that, that, that is the bit that, that uh, insul insulates between these two. If you look at where they connect to on the actual jack when you plug it in, you see it all moving, you can figure out where you need to wire it up to. This obviously connects to the tip, so that's the top of the jack socket, and then this connects to the ground. This one actually also connects to the ground, but if I plugged in a stereo cable, for instance, this would actually connect to the stereo side. I'll just show you that really quickly. Because why not? We're, go we're, we're going all. We're going to town. We're going to town. For instance, this right here is a stereo version of the same thingamajiggy. Uh, you've got the tip, which is I can't remember whether it's left or right on an audio cable, and then the the uh, ring, <laughs> the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. And that means that you know the actual this actually connects up, and when you plug it in, you notice this connects to the tip, this connects to the uh, ring, and this connects to the sleeve. But if you plug in a mono tip ring ring, no tip sleeve sleeve. <laughs> oh dear! All right, okay, now that's over. Now that is over. Okie dokie.
Okie dokie. <clears throat> I want to learn electronics so that I can mod my tape recorder. Good, good stuff. Anyway, the, the time is now finally to plug this fudging majudging in. I'm going to plug in first. I need to actually connect up the ground, which is the black thing on here. I need to connect the ground onto the uh, shield, which is this bit of that phono cable that we snipped up. And then we're going to get another wire, which is coming from here. And we're going to wire that in. Like, remember, we said it goes, all of this fudging stuff goes over to pin 9, which is actually the output of the 555 chip. Uh, the 556, I'm sorry. So pin 9. Hopefully, if I turn on, if I plug in a, if I plug in a 9 volt battery, not backwards. Okay, the 9 volt battery is plugged in. Now I'm just going to turn it up and see what happens. Oh, thank fudge for that. Okay, we've got it working. I'll just, uh, I'm going to get another screwdriver and we're going to play with it for a sec. Ah, uh, come on, I need a flat point screwdriver. Give me a flat point screwdriver. I need it now. I tell you, that, that, that reaction just then that I had, it was a genuine reaction. Like, no matter how uh, straightforward and simple a circuit is, like, there's always that feeling that you've fudged it up. And you just don't know until you've done it. And then there's that embarrassing time. If this didn't work, I'll be like sitting there going, Why is it working? Why is it working? Why is it working? Right, so let's uh, mess around with this. So this knob... There is actually a method to uh, why the uh, steps actually sound quite uh, in ratio in a weird way. Uh, it, it's because uh, the actual uh, the wave is actually uh, catch. Um, I'm trying to find an eloquent version. In fact, there is a very good. Uh, I'm going to include. I'm just going to write it down on my arm. Uh, a description, a website, a, a video for you to watch. Of uh, I think it's uh, yeah, it's by Notes and Volts. Uh, so it, it would it, he would describe it way better than I'm going to describe it. Why there is stepping on here? Uh, and it, it, there was uh, so check out Notes and Volts. How does the Atari Punk console work? I will include the link in the description below when I uh, do it. I'm going to write on the back of here. Include link so we do it. But it's another bit to watch, and you'll realise why um, there is. If I had a, I don't have a, I broke all of my oscilloscopes, I've broke all of my multimeters, everything's broken, so I can't really show you it right now, but. I'm getting carried away. Right, so there's another cool thing before we're going to actually do this. This will be an interesting thing. Ah, fudge your neck. So the 555 chip, uh, five, five, the 555 and the 556 chip are actually rather quite resilient chips. They It takes quite a lot to burn them out and blow them up and stuff. And you know, you can actually literally just wire a control voltage into them to modulate them. So literally, I'm just getting this uh, LFO right now. This is just a, a random LFO. Just gonna do an LFO thing on it. Just looking at the... So I'm gonna plug this LFO. I can't remember the exact pin of the CV of the 556, 556 pinout. Also, if you wanna check, search up 556 pinout and it tells you every single name of the pin. It will show you the flow diagram of what's going on. Um, the control pin is pin 11 and pin 3. So I'm actually going to get this uh, jack cable back. I'm just going to get this back right now. And uh, just quickly, just for instance, 
Uh, oh, where's my jack cables? Oh, oh, I think I've got one in my backpack. I hope I haven't. I hope I've got a jack cable here. Oh my god. before I left them all. <laughs> right, so, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna wire, uh, I'm, I'm just, you don't need to, but just for, for argument's sake, first, the first, absolute first thing you need to do in this instant is always wire in the ground of the jack. The re that reason, if you wire up the grounds together of this and the ground of the jack, everything's gonna connect together. If something's not working, double check that the ground are connected together. Now we're gonna get, I'm just gonna get, um, what pin was it again? Uh, the control pin was pin 11, was it? Was it pin 11? Yeah, pin 11. So I'm gonna plug pin 11, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, which is actually empty right now. I'm just gonna use a 1K resistor, another 1K resistor just for the fudge of it. And we're gonna plug it right into the tip of this. Now the thing is, is, Arguably, you should probably use something to stop it from getting backwards, but it's fine, it's fine. You get the idea, so you can literally plug a control voltage input via a 1K. I, I, I haven't had one burn out yet. It's, you, you might want to be a bit more safe by using maybe a diode as well, just to stop it from getting negative voltages. I don't know, who, give, who gives a damn? Uh, so pin three, you can also wire a control voltage into pin three and it'll do something different. So pin three, just wiring it in. Definitely pin 11 is the best. So uh, we've got that. The great thing is, is to be honest, you, if you, you could you could build this into a uh, a Eurorack synthesizer module, for instance, and you don't really need. You can get away with not adding anything else. You could literally just wire this in. Uh, the plus voltage could be 12 volts. The minus voltage could be ground. I'm pretty sure 12 volts is within the tolerance. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it may break one day, but who gives a flying fudge? It's a bit of fun. So um, it was playing ABBA. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's just a simple thing. Right, what we need to do now, now we've built it, is we need to take this and we need to transfer it. Transfer it over to <clears throat> uh, this right here. So um, I'm gonna do it anyway. It's gonna lit So this is taking an hour so far. This should take probably about the same time because I'm gonna be talking. Um, so what we're gonna do first, is we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, this stuff is strip board. It's the same, uh, this is a good way of prototyping. There are two different types of, well, there's a multiple different types of, of prototyping board. There's permanent prototyping. Uh, but there's two popular types and they are good for different jobs. So for instance, there is this when it gets in focus, which is strip board. And there's stuff like this, which is called like proto board. And you'll notice there's a difference. Uh, this one, None of them are actually connected together. You actually need to make the connections between all of them. On strip board, it's different. You, uh, there's lines, and you make the, these are acting like wires. The lines are acting like wires. So each line is isolated from each other, and you're able to make a, a, a circuit in a grid sort of fashion. So the thing is, is this is damn simple. So it's a case of figuring out whether I want to build it on a bit of proto board or a bit of strip board. Um, and to be honest, the more I'm thinking about it, it might actually be quicker to build it on a bit of proto board. <clears throat> you know what, I'm gonna build it on proto board. What's up with people in silver car? So it's named Atari Punk Console because it kind of reproduces the fast arpeggios. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I can't remember 100% off the top of my head the exact history of the Atari Punk Console, but there's loads of information on it. 
Oh, it's, it's completely evaded me where it began. What was it called? It was called something beforehand. And then it got popularised. The 555 chip has been around since the mid, <clears throat> mid to late 1970s. Uh, and the 556 package. So the I can't remember exactly what the actual circuit was called back then. This was it was probably I think stepped melody generator or something like that. I think. Anyway, yes, I did say proto proto wave proto board. Yeah, yeah, basically. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to use a socket. This is called an IC socket. Um, if you type type in IC socket, they'll turn up on your chosen vendor. Very cheap. Uh, you can get it from what the electronics store that I tend to get a lot of things is uh, Rapid Electronics, and that is in the UK. The reason I go for Rapid Electronics is because I find them to be cheaper. Their 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 website is much easier to circumnavigate than others. I found personally, and um, yeah, for instance, in on in you can get for instance in Rapid Electronics for I think about one pound twenty. I think you can get a slee, a roll, a tube of about 20 of these. I think that's about it. You know, 20 of these for £1.20, I think. I might be wrong exactly, but it's in that ballpark. <clears throat> so I'm just going to solder. So I'm actually going to clear this up. And we're going to go to this part now. So I'm going to unplug the battery because we're going to actually use the battery. So we're not actually going to read it off the breadboard, we're going to go back to uh, reading it off this. In fact, I printed it out twice because I thought forwards about this, I think. Oh, please say I did print it out twice. Yeah, I did. Woo! So we're going to do it again, but we're going to build it for those people who want to build it on strip board now. Strip board time. Right, right, dokey. Okie dokey. Strip board? Nah, I'm going to do it on pro board. So. <clears throat> Proto board, yeah, again, I think I got these off eBay again. So uh, I'm just going to solder in the the IC socket. The reason the IC socket is there is in case I do draw, make it wrong and I manage to fry the 556 chip, well, at least I've got, uh, I can swap it. So my, in fact, I need a new soldering iron tip already. This is, uh, this has nearly had it. <clears throat> So I'm just putting this in place first. I've just chosen at random, completely at random. I always uh, suggest uh, with strip boards and proto board layouts, it's way easier to just make it up on the go. Like following a layout of strip board is way more confusing than actually just looking at a schematic like this and just doing it yourself on the go. It's quicker, it's simpler, like you, you just make up the circuit on the fly like this. It's it's a lot quick easier than going uh, one, two, three, four, five, resistor goes there, okie dokie, oh, oh, la -de da Which is what I've done, I've done that a number of times and it's, it's fine, but this way is potentially quicker. So we're gonna choose really quickly a place to put the nine volt battery. Uh, so this is the nine volt bit. We see that it needs to connect, so, so the nine volt battery needs to connect. <coughs> over to pin 14 mainly. Let's just do it straight to pin 14. Let's just do it there. Let's start it off. So I'm actually gonna... No, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it here. Ah, get in there. So I'm gonna pop it there. Like that. I'm gonna solder that. Solder it on down. Now there's a number of different methods of actually doing proto board. Uh, I do it a very... my way. People probably do it different ways. There's matters of different ways, but I'm going to do it the way that uh, without specialist uh, wire, uh, wire that is ill fit for the job, I think I'm going to use because it's just more like what you'd have lying around. So you could use any old wire, whatever wire you have sitting around, usually aim for something that's about this thickness. This is single core, but you could also use braided if you really want. Single core for this instance would be easier than using stranded cable. So if you look here, um, stranded is basically a bunch of different bits and then single core is literally one. I oh, know I wasn't in focus. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to connect uh, pin 14 uh, to 9 volts. So I'm going to actually just, I'm just going to do it like this actually. I'm just making it up as I go like literally, I'm just going to go like this. 
you can actually go boop 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 with solder, but it's um it's a little bit time consuming and it's actually just quicker just using a bit of um bit of wire like this so you just kind of get it and you go like You gotta make the noise every time you make a successful connection. And then you snip it. Now as you can see down there, we've actually got a connection between that. That's just using any old crap. You could also do it on the top. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Any either of the Oh, I've just bloody wonkied it. Ah, oh, like an absolute plonker. Okay, anyway, right, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna cross off what I've done. So I've done this. Now I also need to connect it from pin 14, well from the positive voltage, over to pin 10. So we're going to do that now. So we're going to find uh, pin 10. I'm actually going to do this one because you could do it either way but I'm going to do it multiple different ways for this just to show you. You can also do it with an insulated piece of cable. You could even use the bit, the breadboard cables. You could just pull them out of the breadboard that you were making and literally just build it in place. So eight, nine, 10. I'm literally just gonna do that. Uh, push this aside, push this down. And then solder. Oh. Didn't do a very good job of this one, but what are you going to do? This is why this is why sometimes it can be quite tough to use this thick-ish cable, but it's much more uh, general purpose. Always double check what you've done uh, because it's quicker to make sure as you're going, make sure like you've made a, you haven't made a mistake. Make sure the the solder the connections are right and uh, they're proper because. If you could, if they aren't, then you might be in problem town later on. So just double check everything whilst you're going. Do it f thoroughly. So we've done this. Uh, the next one that needs to connect to this is pin four. So we're going to get <clears throat> actually going to do this again. I'm just going to wrap it around like this. I'm just going to get this. Oh, I'll just do it like this. I'm not going to use my teeth. I'm going to do set a good example here. One, two, three, four. Um, wrap it around. This is I've made it a bit big, but what are you gonna do? Oh, push this down, down there. Lovely job, Luke. Okay, okay. Connect that. Now we've got to get this this one right. Oh. Double check you haven't made any shorts. And move short shorts. I like short shorts. Who likes short? God, fucking Simpsons. I haven't seen that in years. I haven't even watched TV in years. Um, <clears throat> and always use flux. Flux is a luxury that we don't have in this situation. Right, so we've got this. You don't like people say use flux. You don't need flux. Just do it without it. Who cares? You don't need to buy it. I don't think I've ever bought flux. I probably should. It might be a life-changing experience. Right, so I'm actually connecting after I nearly forgot it last time. Wire this up. Plug that in there. The thing is, is solder does come like a lot of solder comes with. Flux inside it. Using too much can be a bit messy, but you can do what you want. Double check it again. Now I probably should have, I'm, I'm breaking this nine volt thing. I should have put this on last because it's wiggling around on this. It's not the most ideal connection, but I'm actually, I'm actually gonna remove it right now. Just so I can do that later. <clears throat> right, so uh, next step, oh, we're gonna put connect two and six together. Uh, da, 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 da. I might use a different color wire, just cause why not? <clears throat> I 
<laughs> SMD? We don't use those words here. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Right, so pin six and pin two. Connect those together. In fact, we're going to get right next to the chip. Like so. Lovely jobly. Push it along. Push it to the pins. <clears throat> Lovely. Oh, oh yeah. I like it. Very nice. Very swanky. What a swanky bow banky. Okay, we got that. Uh, right, no, so pin, um, uh, just like these need to connect together, we need pin 12 and pin 13 to connect together. So we're going to connect those together, going to get a little, a little bit of wire. In fact, you know what, let's just go crazy lazy and just uh, actually connect pin 12 and 13 together like this. Oh, this is one flux would have been good. Come on. Hey. So you've just, I've just made a bridge for that. So yeah, God, it's the bloody flux crew over flux crew over on here. I'm oh, sorry. I was reading. I was getting. I'm really slow at reading. This is why I don't. My don't have a look. My no computer Discord because it it looks like an absolute mayhem on that thing. There's too too many bits of information. Too much. Too much word. Z. Right. So now we're going to connect the ground, which is over here. We're going to connect it over to pin seven. I'm literally just following it. This is reasonably messy. You could do with uh, color coding your wires, but. I'm doing it in a situation where somebody maybe doesn't have the luxury of having a load of different wire colours. So I'm literally just going to connect it over to uh, the ground bus. This is more looking at like how you can literally get by with just the bare minimum of a uh, of things like you could use a soldering iron you could even use a pair of scissors you don't need pliers scissors do just a scissors will work at a pinch they will work at a pinch in fact there was a number of years that I actually didn't have pliers and I just used scissors scissors oh God. Mm. all right pin seven right now we're going to put in the resistor which goes between pin one and pin six Make sure it's the right way up. Also, I forgot to mention on the on the uh, IC package to denote the top. There is a little semicircle on the uh, on the uh, connect on the socket. That's why forums are good. I don't know why people like Discord over forums. It just seems like an absolute fudge stickle. Too many too many things happening. Right here we go. Right, and then we put this 1k and it's connecting between pins 1 we're going to snip this right here don't use your mum's best scissors that's literally what I used when I was a kid why are my scissors blunt? That's, no, does, my mum doesn't sound like that <laughs> get a nice bit of solder solder as they say in, in America Solder, whatever. Either way, they're both correct. Right, so. And now, we've got to get some of these capacitors again. Get your capacitors out. Get two of these. Any old ones. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Right, so pin six needs to go to ground. So right here, we notice that we need to put a capacitor between pin six and ground. Uh, pin seven is actually directly connected to ground, so we can connect a capacitor straight from pin six to pin seven. Just why not? Because why not? Okay. Hi. 
What you are building here will work with a normal IC. Yes, the 555 will do this. Thank you very much, uh, Dion. Uh, yeah, uh, this will work. Uh, you can just get away with using 255 chips. Like I said, there are various schematics around on the internet of both. So this is one that's, for instance, got 2555 circuit chips. So if you are struggling to find a 556, which I don't know, I don't know what the uh, what the supply is like in South Africa, then yeah. You can do it with a 555. Two 555s. Five, five, five. And likewise, you could actually go even further and use just like a few op amps and whatnot that's inside a 555, like the comparators and stuff. Comparators! So now we have connected the capacitor on that side, cross it out. Bye 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 bye. Uh, and then the next capacitor we're connecting over to, uh, so this is going to be a little bit more complicated to try and find a ground to connect it to, so pin 13 or pin 12, these two connect together, needs to connect to uh, ground via a capacitor, so we get from, actually yeah we can stretch it, spread it over, Ooh. so I'm going to do it like, I'm actually going to do it like this, I'm going to spread the legs a little bit, <coughs> push it down, get this one over here, Snippity snippity, and then get that one over there. Snippity snippity, lovely jubbly. Ah, uh, ruin your short on the between the 12 and 13. Make it reasonably close. Check that's made a connection. Not the neatest thing in the world, but what are you going to do? Who cares? Right, so we got that. Double check the connections are made. Make sure it's reasonably neat in places. Yep, okay, so that is that one done. Now it gets to the point of what we're gonna do with the potentiometers. This uh, gets a little bit complicated. Like I haven't actually got any um, 1M potentiometers sitting about that might be very good. <clears throat> the thing is I've got these and they're logarithmic. Hmm. Or I could use oh, I could use these. I got two of these actually. Not absolutely ideal, but these are circuit board ones. Are the PCB mount ones, and we can use these. Uh, like I said, I don't have any others uh, that are sitting around. Luckily, you can still sort of in a pinch use these. In fact, one of them. This is going to make it a little bit simpler actually, because we're gonna. I mean, I could. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to build this like this. I'm actually going to put one on here. It's going to be a bit small. I don't think it's going to fit in an enclosure very coolly. In fact, we'll just make it a really small thing. Ah, squeeze it on. This one's a bit of a squeeze because the actual legs are bigger than the holes. So there's one. I'm going to put one on this side as well. The great thing is about the Atari Punk console is it's a bit of fun, so it doesn't matter which way around you do the potentiometers still gonna work. So now we've got two potentiometers there. It's starting to look like Colin's lab, Colin's, Colin's lab potentiometers. Uh, managed to completely, these holes, are, the, the legs, the, the mountain legs on the potentiometers. The, by the way, the two back legs are just mountain legs. I've managed to, they're, they're too big for the holes on these, but I've just forced them through. I'm just gonna plug them in. They're not quite gonna connect, but what are you gonna do? So now we need to um, double check everything else is there, yeah, so uh, from pin 12 and 13 we need to connect it to the outside leg of this one, so pin 12 and 13, which is over here. I'm actually going to do this from the back with uh, insulated cable, so literally just going to put some solder, solder on there. I'm going to plonk it like so. One wire here, like that. And then it needs to connect over to this. I'm just doing it scrap, scrappy, 
doesn't really matter. So that is that connection. Push it down. Uh, so that's, um, I've connected it basically between pin 12 and that side of the potentiometer. Now this side of the potentiometer, uh, because this is around the other way, I'm going to connect it to this one. Uh, that needs to connect to pin 1. So pin 1, which is there, uh, so there, needs to connect over to there. So. It's pronounced Sauter. Sauter! That <laughs> sounded a little bit Irish then. Bit of solder. Solder? I oh got solder. I've been watching too much 8 bit guy. So solder? Solder. Um, boom. Uh, get this over onto this. By the way, this is not precision electronics. Uh, this is the scrappiest, most scrappy, but hopefully it's an introdu introduction into this because it's a bit of fun. Now what we need to do is connect both of the central legs of these together. That's because both of these need to connect to five volts. Actually, we're not gonna do that. Uh, five volts is this leg right here. So we need to wire that up to there. I'm gonna do it like this. Yeah, screw it. So I'm gonna make one leg. Also, um, it's getting a little bit hard, so I'm going to get this uh, helping hand here, just because uh, how, now the potentiometers are sat on the back of this, and it's actually getting a little bit hard to actually um, show you. But you don't need a helping hand, you don't need any of that crap to do this. You can get by without it, if you're really in a pinch. And you want to have a bit of fun. It's all about having a bit of fun now. Alright, so... Solder onto there, connect this up, this this old blob of chunk of solder right there is actually the plus, the positive volts, voltage, the plus volt, plus V, and then we need to do the same to the potentiometer over on this side. Oh Dion, you don't know, that, uh, but streaming without a computer, shh, there's no computer involved, no computer was harmed in the making of this. Sold her. Right, so starting to sound like um, an Age of Empires character. Focus there. Oh, this is getting chunky. There's a lot of uh, lot going on in the back of this. I haven't done the neatest job in the world on this, but like I said, it doesn't need to be neat for this to work. It's a bit of fun. So now that is probably done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wire in. Either A, we're going to wire in the... I could even glue that there. No, that will be stupid. So, annoyingly, like I said... Oh, actually, I'll tell you what a good way of doing this is. So, the the these are being a little bit awkward. Ah, oh, they're not going to fit through the holes. Oh, oh, poke it through. There, it's a little bit short as well, because like I said, I found it. So, it's not like I bought that 9 volt connector, so I'm just... Trying to figure a way of not making it break every time I move it around. So what I did then is I just poked it through this hole in an attempt to actually stop it from snapping. Hopefully that will do the job. Now what we need to do is double check on the comments if anybody's noticed anything I haven't done. You can stream from a phone, you don't need it. Yeah, I'm, I'm streaming from a computer, I'm not... I'm not I can't lie, you can even see the computer. You can see the computer! Um, right, so the next thing I need to do is find a... Oh, look at my Leslie guitar. I'm doing some modifications to it. It's all in pieces. <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to wire in a jack socket. Hot glue! Hot glue! 
Hot glue! Right, so now we're going to connect up this jack socket. The thing is with these jack sockets specifically is there's a load of fudging connectors on the back. And initially it can be quite complicated, but what you need to do is in order to figure out the pinouts, it actually gets quite uh, easy after a while, is you have to look at what's going on inside <clears throat> to understand the, the mechanism. So when you plug in a jack cable, where's the fudging? Here we go. When you plug in, like we did earlier with the other type of jack socket, you just gotta have a look at what's connecting to what. So let's get focus again. So plug it in. Ooh, just look at that. Uh, so you see there that this bit of metal right there is connecting to the tip of the jack socket So that's the positive part. So you need to take it out again Have a look and see where that bit of metal is actually connecting to and you will see that it actually connects to this bit right here So this is a bit of metal in the manufacturing that just gets slid in there and that acts as that and then you need to find what and then you look down at the bottom if you look really carefully at the bottom you'll see the actual the ring at the top is connected to this one so that is ground, so this is ground, and this is uh, the tip. The rest of them, you wouldn't, you wouldn't worry about them for now. They, they, they're switches, they, they do multiple different things, but these actually turn out pretty cheap and pretty, these are probably the best jack sockets uh, at, from a price standpoint as well as functionality. Not those really nasty guitar style ones, they're awful. Oh, oh no, this ain't gonna work, look at that. <laughs> what a silly billy. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect this now. Get some solder on these two legs, which are the ones that I just spoke about. I'm going to make I'm going to make blue uh, a ground. So I've got two colours here, so you don't even need to have multicoloured uh, wires, just remember where they're going. You could just solder it like that. Proper big chunky solder blobs, who, who cares? Ah! Not the neatest thing, but it's just quick and easy. You can braid this up. Right, so now we are going to So now the next step is to figure out where to actually plug this in. So last time uh, we need to connect the the blue wire which is ground. We need to connect that up to ground on here. So let's find the best ground. Ground, I reckon the best spot is literally just on the back. I'm just going to do it proper scrotty. Who cares? Who cares? Actually, I aren't. I'm going to poke it through. I used braided wire, so a little bit on the frustrating side to poke through the holes. Connect it up. So that's the ground connected. Now we need to connect, uh, remember, pin 9. Pin 9! Pin 8, pin 9. Feeling fine, but no, do, do, have it up there, oh yeah, soldering away, soldering my night away, what else can I see, my dog died in my pickup truck's got a puncture, oh dear, oh dear, right. Okay, connected the cable, did a bit of a hash job on that, but we got it, we got it, we got it going. Ground are all the same potential, so potentially you could ground it to anything. Right, with any luck, this will work. I'm really hoping, because there's always that scary time that I might have just messed something up, and I might be sitting here like an absolute plonker for many hours to come, because after this is the fun bit, and that is putting an enclosure around this thing if we have time. If this works first time, we're getting straight to the enclosure because oh, I hate it when things don't work, but things do sometimes not work. Now this is this is when I wish I didn't cut this. Oh, I was thinking ahead. So I'm getting another phono cable. 
because I stupidly cut that one. <laughs> Just going to plug in another phono cable. Yep, got connection. So I'm going to get the, uh, oh god, this is the moment of truth. Is it going to work? Okay, so that's working. Now we're going to add one more thing to this. We're actually going to add a switch because why the fudge not? Uh, the switch is going to act like a really good thing, so it's only going to work when you push the button. That means you're going to your 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 uh, uh, nine volt battery can stay in place forevermore. Actually, but we're only going to build this into it after we've put it inside an enclosure because the problem is if we put it in the enclosure and then this is there when. Uh, it, it, you'll find out why. So uh, actually, yeah, screw it. I'm going to build it into this thing now. So this is an enclosure. This is a little box. Um, we're going to put it into this. Oh, God. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a silver Sharpie. I'm going to grab a silver Sharpie and we're going to eyeball this like this. We're going to go like this. I'm like, yeah, okay, about about there, about there. That'll do, and if we drill the hole slightly bigger to accommodate for slight mistakes, then we are golden, and then we need another one like here, screw it. Uh, and that's about it, and then for the jack cable, we're gonna put it on the top. I'm gonna pop it right on. Just double, have a double think about it, because you don't wanna be putting it somewhere where you know it's not gonna actually fit. There. Now we're gonna go slightly above. Oh, 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 screw it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now, okie dokie. The great thing is with uh, watching this is you can rewatch it. I'm not gonna delete this. You can watch it. And if you wanna watch more builders live streams like this, there are loads more to rewatch and watch in the future on Patreon. I will do a few more public ones, but they'll be focused on simple things like this. If you wanna watch more, like experiments on slightly more complicated things and stuff like that, uh, like a PT2399 for instance, there is a couple, I think there's about three or four PT2399 builders live streams already that you can watch back over on Patreon, so if you're interested. So what I'm using now is this stepped drill bit. In fact, it's messy, this, so you might not want to do it on your workbench, but meh. I'm, I'm just doing it because I, to save having to move. Uh, also, without it goes without saying, uh, this, be careful, be careful, don't cut your hand off. Maybe if you haven't used a drill before and you're not feeling comfortable with it, ask somebody who is comfortable with doing it. Uh, you can use a cutting oil or something like that to make it smoother, but the thing is with using cutting oils uh, with this is, you get a greasy effects, thing. you've got to wash it after, and that's, uh, that's just not what we want to do. So you sort of figure out which step you want to get to. I'm going to say we're going to get up to the third chunk. The great thing is about step drills and die cast ones is they, they just eat them up. They're absolutely f amazing. There we go, as easy as that. You could use a drill press if you want, if you really fancy, but I, it's just pointless. I've I've got away with using like hand drills. I've never used a drill press or anything like. I'm like I, I've never used. I don't really use screw uh, uh, tape measures and rulers to kind of measure this stuff out. You can literally get away without any of that crap. You could just. Uh, funnily enough, I for five years I used the same uh, ten pound uh, power drill. Uh, so like you don't even need a decent drill. Like, it can all be crap. You can still get by. Like, you don't need the best stuff. 
don't worry about that. I mean, this is good. Like, obviously, a DeWalt one with a nice big chunky power pack. The great thing is about the bigger power packs is you can find out how much battery is left on it, which is always good. You can get replacements for cheap. That's just a suggestion. So now you just double check. You put them in the right place. Yeah, that's about right enough. So we've got that. Now, um, there is one thing that I need to double check before I actually make this drill, is whether this is a normally open or a normally closed switch. The thing is, is uh, switches actually come in, and uh, maybe it says on the bottom. No, it doesn't. Uh, switches come in two different types when they're like this. This is a momentary switch. They come in normally open or normally closed. When it's called normally open, which is short, well, NO, uh, that means when it's not pushed, uh, these aren't connected. When you push the button, these two wires get connected. When it's normally closed, it's the opposite. When you're not pushing it, these two wires are connected. When you push it, these wires aren't connected. I need a normally, <coughs> normally open. So now what we do is we get any old multimeter, you don't need a fancy multimeter, you can even get by with a, the crappiest five pound multimeter right up to uh, calibrating oscillators, you don't need good equipment. You can have any old crap and you can make amazing stuff. So don't worry about it, I'm, I'm turning it into the mode that listens to continuity, just connecting this together just to listen, and then I'm pushing on the switch. Yeah, so this is a normally open switch, so there we go. Why not add a simple diode filter into the same box? Uh, I'm just keeping it simple for this. The thing is with a simple diode filter. I, I, I've been at this for a couple of hours. Maybe in another video we'll add some other things, but I'm trying, this main project is literally just a simple introduction into electronics just to sort of answer the question that I get quite a lot is like, how to start? Well, hopefully this whole video, because it's not edited, doing it in real time, it can be a potential of being able to follow along and do a very tried and tested project, which is the Atari Punk Console. So now we're gonna put in a hole for this, for this button. Not big enough. Not big enough. Yeah. Ah. Lovely. And now uh, we get uh, this one, which is gonna be for the jack socket. Watch your hands all the time, you don't wanna break your hands. And also, hold on to it firmly or clamp it down. Uh, we're okay with a step drill bit and die cast. You don't tend to get runaway, but if you're drilling into something like a aluminum sheet, you've gotta be really careful with your hands because you can actually get runaway uh, panels, which actually mean that the it gets caught on the drill bit uh, if you're pushing too hard and you're drilling not firmly enough, it can it can actually start spinning, uh, which can end up causing quite a, a, a quite a serious damage to your other hand that was originally holding it down. So be careful. Drilling, even with a power tool like this, it's no joke. You know, like you can hurt yourself. Like I said, in this instance, die cast doesn't tend to run away like that, but there still is a risk. So just be very careful and do it very firmly. Be very aware of what you're doing. Did that one too big, but whatever. <clears throat> okay, right, now. Yeah, spinning bits, spinning plates on a drill bit are very dangerous. Like, I nearly lost a finger when I was like, when I started, when I started, like I was just, I was just, oh yeah, pain. Like you just gotta be really careful. Also, yeah, safety glasses. I mean, I've, I'm tempted by, I, I this, uh, just shut your eyes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, if you wanna take, ser take it seriously, then yeah, definitely think about safety glasses, all that stuff. 
all that good stuff. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to build this into it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, switch in and a safety tie. <laughs> Right, so I'm, the reason why I couldn't, I wasn't going to solder this in yet is as you can see I actually have to poke this style of switch you actually have to poke it through. I'm using this style of switch because it's what I have sitting around. I found it was just the first switch I put my hands on. So I figured, you know, just act like, you know, let's say you've pulled this out of an old, I don't know, an old thing. You've got sitting around a random old switch. So just make it with any old crap. Right, so now we need to uh, snip this. This is basically going to make a connection between the plus, the positive on the uh, nine volt connector uh, and, well, the, the other end. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to disconnect this side of the battery and we're going <clears> to, <throat> we can use a heat shrink, but just for the sake of today, because like I'm doing, this is an exercise just to show you that you can literally do it with any old crap. Just get, uh, just connect this together, and then use a bit of insulation too. You can use, uh, you can use, uh, just use heat shrink, whatever, whatever you've got sitting around. But remember, heat shrink. You've got to put the heat shrink on first. But if you haven't got heat shrink, then whatever. You can use anything. You can even use an old, old banana sticker. <laughs> Just for something like this anyway, not for your mains, you don't want to do it like mains. Like, tiny little bit, you can even go fancy, go neat, you can tell I've done this. No, oh, no, bloody hell, I haven't. Ah, my finger! So I'm going to do it like this, I'm going to wrap them together like this. You could use a Wago clip, anything, but whatever you've got sitting around, this is just a bare minimum exercise. To poke this one through as well. We're going to connect this to the other side. Where's my snippers gone? Right, next step is popping this stuff in there, basically. And then we've got to figure out what the fudge to do with the battery. So now it's a case of... It's really... Oh, there's another thing. These things have slight little, uh, little uh, razor bits on. Snip these off to get a bit more depth on your potentiometer. Still, the potentiometers are surprisingly shallow. These are really shallow potentiometers. Might struggle to get a clasp on this. You don't need pliers, just use, you don't need a wrench or sockets. If you've got the bare minimum, you'll get by. Sometimes hand tighten is more than enough. I'm just doing this because these are actually quite awkward, these potentiometers. Connect in the jack, pop the jack over here, get a washer if you want, it comes with a washer, I think that's the right washer, that's not the right knob though, that's not the right jack though, right double check it's working and we'll figure out what to do with the uh, with the battery, because the battery is obviously a little bit awkward here. It's a little bit short and awkward. I might even use some double sided tape and just tape it down, but first we'll double check it. Uh oh. I oh know, it is working. Right, so I'm just going to get some double sided tape for the actual. Uh, for the 9 volt. This is just bare minimum stuff. You could actually get a socket, hold, a 9 volt holder or something. This stuff actually does 
pretty well. This 9 volt will last for quite a long time because you literally got it as a switch. It's literally switched. So it's not going to run out when it isn't, it's not on when it's not being used, basically. Oh. Oh, there's one very important thing that we've forgotten. Ah, uh, where's, where's the Sharpie? Got, got to sign it, got to date it. What date is it? 10th of the, what's the date? Uh, what the, January, February, March, April, May, June. Is it six? Seems a bit late in the year, bloody Nora. 21, ah. Uh, Bloody Nora. And then also, uh, another thing that's good to do is write something about that day. I'm trying to think what I've done today. What have I done? Complete blank. I'm just gonna write, did a live stream, making this. It's just really nice. Uh, to do when you look back at things that you've made and then you've actually written about that day you get a memory did a live stream making this boom there we go bish bosh bash colonel moustache well I mean it isn't a sh it's a sharpie if it was I would agree with you if it wasn't a Sharpie brand Sharpie. But I was literally looking for a Sharpie. So there we go. <clears throat> right, okay. So uh, now we're gonna, there's a couple more things we need to do. And it is golden. Uh, let's find, may as well, whilst we're here, we're doing all right for time-ish, not really. Uh, have I got any? Wait. Here we go. This is a nice uh, this cupboard, this drawer right here. You don't need to do this, but I've got some. They're called 3M Electronics feet. I'm just going to put some feet on it because look how wonky that is. That's so much far over to that side, but who cares? I don't. It's about it's about the enduringness of it all. You do, literally don't need to put feet on it. In fact, feet are more more bad than they are good. Okay, right. what are you going to do? <clears throat> There's some feet. Boom. And now we've got one more little thing. Well, actually, two more little things. <clears throat> oh, I think I've got a Sharpie that's got it. Uh, what am I going to do? Um, uh, let's just, just do like. This is going to go under the pot, so always be wary of that. Uh, oh, screw it, I'm going to draw. I like drawing my characters. Happy, happy, tran, happy transistor. Oh, it's running out, running out. Oh well. Don't want to do too much because it's literally looking like it's running out, so. <clears throat> oh no! I turned it too far on the side. There we go. It's 
transistor, it's got three legs. There's one final thing to do. So now we just need to put on some um, knobs. I'm using these because I use them quite a lot in a lot of my builds. Oh, look how wonky that is, but you know, what are you gonna do? So now let's give it a final test. There we go, uh, that's just, um, yeah, I hope that was um, of use, potentially, for somebody who's looking at building and getting into electronics. Um, like, like there's other, a lot of, uh, please just, I'm gonna be around for about another five to 10 minutes, please, if there's any questions you think that might be, you know, if you've got any questions. Uh, an enclosure, for instance, use whatever you want. Also, uh, if you're thinking about enclosures, non-metal enclosures, can be better for starters because you're not worrying about having to isolate the circuit from the actual box because that's another thing that you have to think of. If you've got a metal enclosure and you've got a circuit board you're just literally sitting on it, you're going to get shorts and it's not going to work very well. But these, these die cast Hammond enclosures are, are really good. They, they can be quite... They are, they are quite expensive though, like this is like a, this is, I don't know, this is about five to ten pounds for that enclosure, so it's not the cheap one. Will you be putting schematics and stuff on your site? It always really helps to explain things. Hopefully, Kieran, uh, I've explained everything that's required and all the links because the schematic, uh, there's no point in me making an extra schematic because the instructables below, which is regarding this, this one, and everything in this video is below. Rip it off and lick it. Got to make double check your work, son. Shouldn't you make a pass bought a crab or grung out the sound? Not sure what that rat pass thought. A crab to grung out the sound. This was good times, but people make your instruments DOI auction this off. Any easy mods that you can do to this circuit. Like I did with the breadboard, you can add control voltage input. So if you look at the breadboard, uh, if you go back to the start where the breadboard was, you can add control voltage in via a 1K resistor to pin 11 and you add an extra jack socket. I won't be doing this mod today for this one specifically, but that's how you add a potential, uh, you, you add circuit uh, uh, control voltage. Just use an empty plastic ice cream box, exactly. You don't even need a case. So could you could make a wooden pedal? Yes. The thing is, you've got to be very, very uh, you've got to be aware with wood, though. Uh, wood tends to be a lot thicker, and it's a lot more difficult to get uh, panel mount components sticking out of wood. Uh, so just be wary of that when you're thinking of using wood. So what new crazy modules are you working on? A number of different things. I, oh, where is it? I've got a sequencer. So there's an update on the keyboard sequencer coming along. Uh, that's nearly done. And there's a massive, massive delay, which is gonna be up 
in the next uh, two months and then also a, a control voltageable envelope generator, dual envelope generator thing. So a couple of things. So you are rule are power sag can change the sound a bit too, yep. Also that's another thing you could do. Well the thing is is these uh, tend to add a little bit of like power sag will adjust the sound so you could add a potentiometer between the 9 volt and this just be careful of it might fry it at some point Sam you are the most creative person on earth oh, well, not that creative but thank you very much could this be built to use AA or AA batteries yeah of course you could get away with building this using I think 4 AA batteries so that adds 6 volts if you think every AA battery is a 1.5 volts so just use 4 AA batteries and you get 6 volts that would that would be enough to power this. And also, uh, AA batteries, that would last, last longer than a nine volt. Good to be safe from a depressed leaker from the big sad. This is always good. I've gone British and used Altoids tins. Altoids tins are a classic. They're always a good one to go for. Put it through a Leslie speaker, I would, but I've, they're all in pieces um, right now because it's being modified. A video to come, morning wood. <laughs> so yeah, okay there. Uh, so if you want to see more, uh, so if you want, if you want to see more builders live streams, uh, not quite like this. They're a little bit uh, more on experimenting with breadboard and things like that. There's a lot of varying different ones. For instance, there's delays, LFOs, digital wavetable oscillators, relay computers, uh, VCAs, VCFs, to name a few. They're all available as many as well as loads of other things over on Patreon. So if you want to, at the same time. Support the worst crap and just yeah have a look at that and if not then yeah there's I will probably do a few more of these at some point and um, maybe I might do one a month I'm not sure I need to figure it out yet how about MIDI I mean why would you add MIDI to this you could add MIDI to it in a weird way but there's well, what's the point MIDI uh, the thing is with MIDI is you won't be able to get a real scalable thing out of this 5, five I just don't think a 555 five, five chip. There are ways of making a 555 five, five, like organ thing, so each note is a 555. Five, five. And you could probably scale it. In fact, there are 555 five, five uh, VCOs that are scaled. So yeah, but it gets a lot more busy. It gets a lot more busy. Sam, didn't you say you would build a sequencer out of Strouder switches? The Strouder video is coming up very soon. Uh, regarding Strouder switches, uh, I'm actually not going to build a sequencer out of Strouder switches. I'm, I'm building a drawing machine out of Strouder switches. <laughs> so um, uh, that's one video coming up. It's a ten. It's, it's, so basically, the Strouder switch acts like a coordinator. You can dial in a coordinate on a 10 by 10 pixel screen, which is all uh, filament bulbs RGB. So it's quite cool, um, and um, then also there's the relay. It's not Stroud to switch, but relay sequencer is happening. I'm waiting for some circuit boards to turn up to make the really big Beat Step Pro style relay sequencer. All good, well, Shen Wench. Shen Wench, uh, can you use an Arduino to make USB MIDI host? I mean, yeah, but why would for this project? I just don't understand what what MIDI would give to this. I mean, you could, like for instance, you could use, um, I mean, why would you, I don't know. Yeah, you can use an Arduino as a USB MIDI host, yeah. What does APC stand for? Atari Punk Console. Uh, that's what, if you watch the whole thing back, you can see all that. Best to buy from China via eBay and just be patient. It's much cheaper, but it's always good to get it quicker. And the best, to be honest, the best way of building this is using second-hand components, new old stock, local stuff, because then you're not, you're not contributing constantly. So like, have a look around for seeing if there's anything that you could repurpose for this kind of project. Are you gonna pat test this? You don't need to pat test this, it's nine volts. It's, um, it doesn't need pat testing. And also, pat testing isn't a legal requirement. Pat testing is uh, a contributor to maintaining a safe environment, uh, which is a legal requirement. And pat test is not. You've got to assess. You've got to assess um, related to the risks. And to be honest, there's no risk in here. To be honest, there's more risk with a, for a risk assessment to be written about this thing. I mean, maybe you could. If anything, it's ground. It is all grounded. It's grounded. So no, you don't need to pat test this. There's no. There's no point. There's nothing to plug a pat test kit into it anyway. <laughs> Will this live stream be archived? No, you can watch this out back whenever you want. I'm leaving it as it is. And this looks like a person. It's really cool. 
Uh, I'm just going to put a smiley face. Nah, it doesn't work. Cannibalize components from old electronics. That is always the, the chosen way. I'm waiting for the time. I might, I might soon, I don't know, just try and just really start just only using recycled components at some point soon. But I have no idea what you're on about, about your vids are cool. Love your music. Cool, cool. Anyway, right, I'm going to bugger off now. Pat test is only needed on mains as well as... But like, like you say, like pad test... It's just such a grey area, the stuff. But uh, the other thing is, is pat test sometimes don't really need it on the things like this. Uh, the funny thing is, is a lot of things in the museum uh, don't need pat testing because they're not mains powered. I haven't built anything that's mains powered purely for that reason because, you know, like I just, it just feel you feel a lot more liable if you have a lot, you have something they have to constantly check. Yeah, exactly. There's a risk you could hit somebody, or if this is on a wall, you hit your head on it or something. I don't know. Some more of a risk assessment thing. Anyway, pat testing is a UK thing, yeah. Right, I'm going. So have a lovely time, everybody. <laughs> So actually, I've just uh, whilst I was playing with that, yeah, I may very well uh, get the same enclosure again for the next video and make another thing, maybe a delay, maybe next, or a filter, a nine volt filter or a nine volt delay. We'll see, but this will be once a month or once every two months. I can't suggest, but there's more of them on Patreon. But I'll do. I'll save this series for public live streams. Watch back. Anyway, take care. Tara. Have this as a doorbell. To be honest, I've already got I've got this, I've got a really cool doorbell coming up. There's a cool project. Chira for now. Have a lovely time. I'm gonna play you out. I'm trying to do like really calm, moderately cheesy elevator music for the outro.